Hey, what up legends? How's it going? It's your boy Kiwi here. Today we'll be revisiting a deck that I created on stream for the viewers, with which we managed to get 60% plus win rate. It was absolutely fantastic. I already made a video on it. We had a couple nice wins and I decided to keep the ball rolling and do a couple changes, aka Floop wasn't working for everyone or it might have been a little too expensive, so I replaced it with a Void Ripper. Hopefully that works well for you guys. I'm going to be playing a couple games and I hope you guys enjoy. Please subscribe to my channel and click that bell button too. The weekly sub giveaways in the description. Welcome to the frying pan. Let's get in the game, shall we? Playing against the Warlock. I have a very bad hand. That's not really something you're looking to get. What you're looking for... Is one drops, of course. If he's okay, if he's playing Zoo, we might have a chance. If he is not playing Zoo, it's gonna be interesting. The thing against Zoo is they tend to go face, and then you develop your board very fast, and sometimes they just do not know what to do about it anymore. Um, so we'll see what we can achieve here. Okay, this is a thing that he's playing. Which signifies that he's not actually playing Zoo. So if I play this, for example... Actually, let me get some cards first. Okay, so if I play this, for example... Um, it's good for him. It, very, very low impact. Now, of course, I've got Fungal Mancer to go on top of this. Which works great in this situation. Um, so I'll play it. But at the same time, if he has got the file, then I lose them all. Which is not good. It's, so it's all a game of trial and error. And there's the defile, of course. Okay. So now we go with the homunculus. I, on my side, am going to play uh, this living mana. Living mana is more interesting here because I don't have to waste a giggling inventor uh, with the well, the, the divine shields and the giggling inventor. There, I can just attack a little bit, um, force him to do some trades or not. Or he could just do this, of course. Um, here's, here goes the Crypt Lord and Landscaping. And we always have some extra things to play, which is very nice. I'm actually happy that he gave everything back to me. I mean, I'm not happy. Um, would I, be, I would have been happier with some things on the board. But the fact that he killed them on his turn meant that I, at least I had some mana to play with this turn. So it's not too terrible. I, I kind of forced him to play a board clear. Which is great. Because we don't want him to have any board clears. The other cool thing against Warlocks is they tend to uh, hurt themselves, yeah? That's nice. I, I, do, <laughs> I do appreciate my Warlocks for that. Especially when you're playing uh, some sort of an aggressive deck. Come on. You go for it. You go for it. Oh, okay. Well, that's not... I mean, it's not that great for me. That's also a decent trade there for you. And the spell stones to... Okay, the spell stone to heal. What I'm going to do now is that giggling and... Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Or do I? You know what? I think I do want to do that. So I get these little dudes out. So now he'd need to somehow play another board clear. And then if I want, I've got the Fungal Mancer to buff stuff. And I also have a Blood Knight to get some extra buffs. Get a big old 9-9 out. Potentially. If not, I also have the Savage Roar. 
you know, Fungal Minster, Savage Roar is a lot of damage. We'll see what we get out of this deal. Let's go, buddy. Twisting Nether! Oh, he knew what was coming for sure. He knew very well what was coming for sure. All right, let's buff some stuff. Since he cleared our board, now we must we must play the rest. And then if we ever get out of cards, then at least we've got UI to refill our hand a little bit. So it's not desperate. We're not in a desperate situation. Hmm. Void Lord would have been quite bad here. Lord. Okay, it's Dread Lord. Okay. Other type of Lord. Not the right kind. How much damage do we have here? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, 5 plus 4, 9. Plus 10, that's 19. Plus 4, that's 23. Plus 1, that's 20. Enough. We're good. So, Hero Power. Power of the Wild. Savage Roar. Smack, 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 smack. A good. To be honest, the, the matchup against Warlocks is quite easy, and so is Warrior for some reason. Um, Mage, not as good, but it's still feasible. I really like this deck, as it does offer some sort of versati uh, ver versatility compared to the other token druids, so... I hope you guys give it a try as well. Alright, for some reason, with this deck, I've got a 100% win rate against Control Warrior. Don't know why, but apparently it's very good against Control Warrior. So if you see one, don't fret, you're good to go. Uh, you'll, you'll destroy them. Even if they got Brawl, even if they got Reckless Flurry, it does not matter. Your recovery is absolutely insane. You've got double living mana. Yeah, you've got Microtech controllers to boot. It's ridiculous. You can get a lot of value out of this deck. Um, I'm going to not keep any of this trash because that's not something I want. What I want is one drops. <laughs> like this. And the other thing that you want is the Crypt Lord. If you can place down a Crypt Lord on turn two or three, man, you're in business. Like, actually in business. Like, you went to business school? And you're doing business. Um, yeah, no, just play Mecharu Pass. It's not a great play, but I feel like I need to do this. Because... Okay, this is... Wow, okay. Um... So what if I just Void Ripper here trade? Then... Because now I can just kill the Taunt, yeah? He's got a 2-3 and a 2-1. I get to either play Loot Hoarder and a Firefly or Landscaping. Which either way is quite good for me. I think like that loot hoarder slash firefly is a bit better next turn because we need the draw and we want stuff to trade it with. That's my guess. Okay. Then what? Like yes, you can do this. Yes, that's a thing you can do. Um, I can also just kill this straight up, but I don't want to. No, landscaping. Landscaping's fine. Gives me three things. He can kill two of them. Yes, he can. Big deal. Like I said earlier, our recovery is insane with this deck. And if you get nowhere, 
If you get no, why is he doing this? Why is he going face? He knows I can trade things. He knows that we have options available to us. He knows that these things are bound to happen where I get the control of the board and then I just smack him with all of my might. Like, why is he doing this? Is he thinking, oh, I'm Zoo, I must go face? You're not a hunter. You don't get to do those things. Well, maybe he does, but... Hmm... Oh, nice. Okay. Is there... Is there a reason why I would not play this Hydra? The answer is I do not know. Yes, there is a reason. The reason is I got living mana, but at the same time, like... So... In a world where I got living ma No, I can't afford doing that. I cannot afford doing that. Because I'm already at 15. You play you play Bitter Tide Hydra against control decks. As an early threat. Um, and most of the time they'll be like, Oh, I don't know what's up and all. This gives me a, a chance to recover a little bit. As I can trade into his things. Because he's most likely going to play stuff since he's playing Zoo. Right? And yes, I don't have mana next turn, but still gives me a chance to sort of recover. Branching paths is okay. Actually, branching paths is insane against warlocks because you get to uh, get 12 armor for cheap, cheap four mana. That's awesome. There's also Malfurion that lets you do that. Get a bunch of armor every turn. I'm kind of... Uh, scared a little bit? I'm a bit scared. Because we know he's going to try to keep going face, right? Ah, okay. So I'll have to trade. I have to trade. Uh, see here, you wanted to do a good trade. You wanted to kill that 2-1. Uh, but you didn't do that. So now I get to do those nice trades. Okay, so then we've got Druid of the Swarm. Next turn, which will protect us a tiny little bit. Okay, he's taking damage. He's damaging himself. That is another thing that I like about Warlocks. They do hurt themselves quite a bit. Okay. What else you got? Okay. So we've got Crypt Lord. Okay, so we've got 5 plus 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. And 14 with my hero power. That's not enough. So instead, we'll be playing the Crypt Lord into Druid of the Swarm combo. Um, and the Druid of the Swarm is going to give us a little poisonous... Ah, uh, no. I think Taunt is better. Unfortunately for us, Taunt is way better. And even if that heals... Actually, this gets an extra health, so this is fine. Okay, I will keep this, these four minions on the board. Because I need to finish him off. So the more, the more things we have, the easier it is for us. Okay. Good thing he didn't get it earlier. Yeah, he keeps hurting himself. Okay, so that kills that. Is that it? Ooh, nice. So now we'll plus one, plus one everything. So now we have seven on board, plus eight right here for lethal. Sweet. 
See, he, he killed himself. That's what happens with warlocks. I do appreciate that about them. All right, win streak. Let's keep going. <laughs> All right, well, that's pretty much it for my rendition of Token Druid. It is definitely a lot of fun to play with and is quite different than most other decks you've seen on the ladder lately. So I hope it was fun for you guys to play. Uh, with that said, thank you everyone for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to participate in our weekly giveaway this Sunday. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.